Okay, so what you saw me doing there is I took this piece outside, I burnt the outside edge with a torch, and I cleaned it up with scotch brite on the sanding mandrel. So this will be the final video for the bear, bear uh, panda bear 2D carving. I went to the dollar store today because all my other paints are tucked away in storage for um, renovations here. This might be the last video on this old school carving fusion table because I got to take this whole table apart and get new floors in here, paint this whole room. So we'll see how it goes, but this whole table has to come apart. Anyways, the colors of paint I'm going to use is red, black, white, my favorite color right here, hooker green. And um, I think I'm going to cap it off with Mod Podge to, for the wood for the finish. So I think the panda bear is going to be black and white. This is going to be like gray colors, these rocks, and maybe I don't, I'm not too sure about down here. This is going to be green, the bamboo. This is going to be gray and white. The moon's going to be red. The background's going to be red and black and maybe little white tips on the top. So I think the best thing for me to do is get the worst over with, which is this background stuff, the background wind stuff. I think what I'm going to do is mix up this red. What color is this? Uh, deep red. I also got Christmas red here too. So I kind of like the Christmas red a bit better, but I don't, I don't care. Anyways, I think I'm just going to go along and paint all the background, just solid red first, because then I can put black like, in here, the deep spots, I can black it and shade it out with uh, dry brushing. So that's what I think I'm going to do. And this video is mostly going to be a time lapse. Um, I got my paint brushes right here. Paint, paint brush. Hey, little Rick, there's my paint brush. Oops, nope, that's not the paint brush. But yes, this does sit in my bathroom. That's where I put my toothbrush to. Anyways, I'll pick a paint brush and um, start carving that, uh, not carving, painting that red in. I got to get this piece done. I got to get this table taken apart. Okay, so here comes the story time part. So I just want to say in advance, I'm not looking for sympathy or um, for you guys to leave comments like I hope you're feeling better and stuff for everybody because I am feeling better and it's you just, you just got to keep the show going. So um, a week ago, I made a video. This is karma too. A week ago, I got to make it quick because I only got 10 minutes for this voiceover. But a week ago, I um, it's karma. It's all karma. I uh, made a video and I was shopping for YouTube and I did, it was just a little clip and I was like joking about putting ice cream in the shopping buggy and the, the shopping cart and cookies and a couple other things. I don't know if anybody noticed, but there was taco shells in there. So it starts off with one night I got the, the beef and I was making burritos. And I noticed I didn't get the lean beef. I just got the medium ground beef and I noticed that the grease in the frying pan was pretty greasy so I dumped some out and uh, into a jar and then uh, cooked, made it finished making it and um, well made burritos um, the next day I woke up I kind of had some stomach pains and I just um, kind of went on with my day with the renovations here we're getting new water pipes and everything new kitchens new bathrooms are my new windows are already in and i'm getting new floors all in the upstairs of my place so it's a real nightmare but so the pain went away that day and then uh, that night i refried the beef because who doesn't love refried burritos so i refried the beef and um burnt i had taco shells i burnt the taco shells so there was kind of burrito sauce with tacos. I don't know, burrito taco or whatever it is. Um, who burns their taco shells out there? I do, all the time. Um, so anyways, I refried the beef and it didn't look that greasy. And I, you know, I put cheese and um, whatever stuff, stuff on it. And after that, uh, the, eating that refried beef, the next morning, well, about two o'clock the next morning, I, I woke up in um, excruciating pain. like. I've dealt with a lot of pain here. Like I said, I'm not looking for sympathy or anything because that's not what it's about. My, I've had skin, like I've been burnt really bad. I got skin grafts on both my legs from the knees to the ankles. I've, my whole body was almost burnt. 
you know, like my head injury, I got like 14 breaks on four ribs and stuff like that. And I'm not trying to say I'm a hero or anything like that, but I know pain. I definitely know what pain is and different tolerances of it. So I was in so much pain. And finally, I buzzed one of my neighbors 10 o'clock the next morning and I told him to come over and I, his wife and I says, I'm in so much pain, I don't know what to do. And they said, go to the hospital. I says, I'm not going to the hospital. I don't need to go to the hospital. I'm just in so much stomach pain. So it happened that his um, wife had a bunch of, I don't know what this is illegal, but they had a bunch of leftover uh, painkillers from a uh, year back or something. Uh, I forget what happened, but I guess they were Delaudens. So they just gave me the painkillers because they know that I'm not an addict. I live in a, a good community place and I, they know that I don't, do drugs, period. And I don't agree with drugs, but I had no choice. So that night, that day, that night, I I think I ate about 10, 10 Dulaudens. They're like an opiate. I was just freaking out of it, but I was still in pain. I couldn't stop taking the pills. So I told myself the next, that night, just keep on popping the pills, still in pain. I told myself that this, if it doesn't, if the pain doesn't go away by like five or six in the morning, I'm driving to the hospital because I wasn't sleeping. I was up in pain, excruciating pain. I, as this is how, this is how I can describe the pain. I thought I was in the war lying on a beach with my guts blown out, not knowing what I can do. And that's, um, it's giving respect to all those people that happened to in the war. But it's, I just thought I was lying on the beach with my guts blown out and not knowing what to do. What's next? You know, how can I, how can I beat this? So I, I, I got out of bed, like I said, without sleep, went to the hospital, emergency. Um, took me about an hour and a half. This was like six in the morning. It took me an hour and a half to see a doctor. And she finally told the nurse, um, I had to get tested before I can get some painkillers. But, um, so I basically, it was a couple hours before I can get any painkillers. And I didn't take any painkillers four hours two hours prior to the hospital because i didn't want to go to the hospital high on painkillers so they couldn't see where my real pain is you know it's good to go to the hospital in the real pain and i was just sitting there and i just it was so painful i just wanted to die long story short is i got a ct scan with dye in it and um the tests came back as i had gallstones so um they finally gave me more. I was hooked up to an IV sitting in a hallway. They finally gave me. I, I was miserable before this. Before they gave me the morphine. I hate morphine too. It makes me so itchy. They finally gave me the morphine and the IV. And you can just feel your whole body warm up. That's the only good part about it. Anything after that I just hate. So she asked me what my pain level is. And I said still 10. And then they, she gave me another one. I said 10. Gave me another one. 10. Then she gave me another one. I said okay now it's at about 3. <laughs> And at that point, it was more busier in the hospital. It's probably about nine, nine in the morning or ten in the morning. So it's a lot more busy, a lot more people. And I'm just so friggin' high on morphine that I'm talking to everybody that's going by me because the IV chairs in the in in the main hallway of the hospital, right? So I'm everybody's friend at this point. But um, yeah, so long story short, they sent me home with um, some morphine pills, and um, <clears throat> I like I, I I didn't take any. I hate them. They make me itchy like a nightmare and give me freaking nightmares like crazy. So, uh, yeah, she said they gave me some antibiotics. The nurse, she was, the doctor was kind of a BITC. You know, the last thing is she's, I, I, I kind of wanted to punch her in the head, but I don't hit ladies. So, but that's things. Are, anyways, long story short, I got, I, I got released. She gave me some antibiotics and some painkillers and then the, the morphine pills. And I returned the morphine pills. I had an appointment with my doctors two days later. My doctor told me, she says, well, you just got to rest. You can't do anything crazy because you're, you got the gallstones in your, in your gallbladder and your, your whole system and your stomach from the seat, looking at the CT scan, everything's inflamed. So you just got to rest. But I haven't been able to rest because I needed to get this piece done. Like, I think I was working on this the day after I got out of the hospital or maybe a day later in pain in pain so this piece i'm telling you guys all right now this piece was done in pain and stress because i'm still having i was still moving the stuff out of the way so they can do the renovations 
clearing rooms because I need whole new carpet, whole new floors upstairs. Clearing rooms downstairs. I have to I had to empty all my cupboards because we're getting new kitchens. So it's been a nightmare. But it's an example, you know. Like even though I'm in excruciating, I still wasn't excruciating pains for for a couple days later. Oh, I also didn't bowel. I'll say bowel. That's another karma thing too because I always talk about shit in my pants or shit in your pants on my YouTube videos. I wasn't able to bowel for four days. So that added to it too. You know, your belly balloons up like a Goodyear blimp and it's, you even touch it, it kills. But anyways, that's the story about that's the story about that if you guys are any of you wondering. So more time you spend sanding and doing your proper cuts like along the edges of that bamboo your proper undercuts your proper sanding making sure there's no bumps in it the easier time you're going to have with this cut type of carving like i've explained to you guys i kind of got sidetracked all this carving was happening but i carry it on i'm carrying on and the, the show must go on just carve rob the show must go on so I guess I will do the panda now. If you look there, like uh, like I told told you from the beginning, you know you got to pay attention to your cuts. And I noticed that I've cut off his ears. It's okay. Hopefully the black paint will fix that. So I'm gonna paint this panda black and white after I take a quick bathroom break, and then I'll be back. Well, it's the best I could do. So, <laughs> this will uh, actually go great in a little kid's room. So, <laughs> so um, oh, I got this. I can't find my little tiny tipped brush. But I got this gray mixed up here. And um, this is the smallest brush I can find. But I'm going to go around these swirls. And I'm going to do some little gray highlights on the tips. And I'm going to go in here with some white, the in the wind with some white and some black and give it some like sharp eye points, highlights. And I think that will be it for, well, also another thing I want to do is because, like I said, I have, I'm running out of time for this piece. But you see here, like I've painted on the frame. So I'm going to paint inside black here. Okay, you can see even there I got some paint on the outside there too. I'm going to paint inside black here. Let it all dry. Then I'm going to burn the outside again and it will just kind of look like that paint is burnt. I'm going to burn it and I'm going to use my friggin' flap sander thing with the bristle with the friggin' oh, Scotch Brite on it and it will kind of just make it blend in together. It's what, it's what I was going for. Okay, so it's a little bit different now. Kind of went a little bit overboard on that gray on the swirls, but I like it a lot better now. Um, this ground here was the same kind of color as the bamboo, so I kind of dry brushed some of the gray color on when I had it going around the swirls. I did some highlights in the wind here. And I dry brushed the uh, paint. Look at the green. See how the green comes along? So dry brushing gives it a lot of different character too. I did some little whites just to show where the bamboo, you know, you get the bamboo split things. So it's kind of a shame I got to give this piece away. Well, it's not a shame. I got, I'm a man of my word. I want to keep it. I'd like to keep this and put this in my room, actually. I think it's a cute little panda. And he's kind of, uh, you know, he's looking down on you when this piece will be higher. Also, I painted inside black and I just kind of um, dry brushed around the outside. So that's done. There's a little bit of red paint there. Don't care. That just shows that Carving Fusion did it. So I'm going to leave this sit overnight. Oh, to win this, you guys know how to win it. I've already said how to win this this um, carving. So I'll ship it worldwide too. And also, I haven't forgotten about the two wood spirits I owe for the winners for the last um, for the last um, giveaway thing that I have. 
they wanted wood spirits and set of dremels i think so i still got to get those done and they'll be getting done before this table gets taken down i promise so um i'm gonna get some i don't think i have it's best to leave this sit overnight i'm i'm not gonna mod podge it i'm gonna go pick up some more of this satin clear i don't know if i'm gonna use matte or satin but i'll pick up some of this tomorrow i'll let this cure fully overnight um, whoever wins this, they're going to have to find their own way to put the hangers on the back. It's not rocket science. It's just I, I don't have the time to do it. i got to kind of go lay down and rest. But, um, yeah, so I'll get some, pick up some of this tomorrow. Give it a couple good coats over the next couple days or the next day. I think it just needs one coat and it will, it will seal really good because this is all painted. Just this might not, um, the wood might not be sealed as good as the painting, but it will say what it is. And then, you, so if you if you guys win this and you want to give it a couple more coats, this is what it is, right? Okay. So let's uh, let it sit overnight. Be back same video. Uh, spray it, and we'll let you know when the live giveaway is going to be. Okay, everybody, that's going to be it. Uh, it for this one. Um, it's now the next day. I did a few coats of this satin clear. That's Russ Oleum. So I don't think you need any more. I think it's a fun piece. So just um, I hope. Some of you guys have gotten some ideas from this. That's what this is about, just opening your mind and getting ideas. But let's look at this compared to the paintings that I did. I'll put the paintings right here. So you can see this is 100% carving fusion style. And I wish I said I didn't make this as a giveaway, but you guys know how to get this. The people that entered is going to, one of you guys is going to get this. We'll do it in a live giveaway. And you don't have to be in the giveaway. But um, you can see right there, that's Jordy art. If you like it or not, I don't know. You can win it. You can burn it. You can do whatever you want to do. Give it away. So you can change this. You can get, get me to carve a wood spirit and instead of getting this and let me keep this. So the giveaway is going to be December 10th, Saturday, noon, 12 p.m. Pacific time. Okay, so I figured I'd make it on a Saturday. So lots of people aren't working Saturdays. It's noon Pacific time. That's the middle of the day. So for me, so it's, who knows if you're going to be able to be up for that, but you don't have to be live for the giveaway. So, and once again, this will be the last video ever for this carving fusion station. The carving fusion power carving station. I got to take it all apart. You can see I got no floors in my room. All the walls are, the. I got to paint the walls. I got to do, I got so much stuff I got to do. Take everything apart and let them get the new floors in. And I got to paint it. And there's just so much to do. But there's been a lot of good times at this um, this table right here. And um, I've learned so much. This is my carving, power carving station. You know, this is where, this is where it happens. So, you know, it's just, I got to, you got to move on and continue. And once they're done, the floors and stuff in here, I figure that I'll build a, another table. Um, I'm going to possibly use it's just, this is a piece of plywood, but I'll probably use another piece of plywood and just kind of make the table a bit smaller. I don't think it needs to be so big. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Yeah, it's kind of sad to see it go, but you know, you got to have changes in your life and changes. These are positive changes. They're not negative changes. So it's just that's just kind of what needs to be done. So thanks again, everybody, for the years of support and um, all that stuff. I don't think there'll be any Dremel carving videos coming out after this one for at least a, a good month and a half or two. Um, I'll do some beach combing videos. I'll do some chainsaw carving videos. I'll have to go over there. Um, I've told you guys my story, but I can't chainsaw carve right now, so I'm kind of. Uh, I bought myself a PS4, so I'm stuck in my bedroom for the next two months playing video games because, well, that's just kind of what you got to do. So we'll talk to you all soon, and good luck to the people, the person that's going to win this piece. Who knows, just car, Rob, maybe it's you. Carving Fusion. Over and out. Till the next time.